Hello, I'm Lisa. I'm Chris. And this is AKS Nets and Crochets, episode 34. We're probably going to call this one Electric Ponytail. Probably not. No one gets that <laughs> reference. <laughs> <laughs> well, since you have finished objects, you should go first. Mostly finished objects. They still need like weaving and stuff like that. So they're not finished, finished, finished. They're, they're not finished. Finish, finish. Right. They're just finished. Okay. <laughs> Why does everyone understand that? Like you say a thing other once, everyone gets what you mean. Like when you're a little kid, like, oh, I don't like like him. I just like him. You know, like why do we all know what that means? How do we all get it? I don't know. Because it doesn't make any sense. Um, I get I bet it confuses people who are learning English. Oh gosh. Like, yeah. Why are you saying it twice? <laughs> <laughs> Do I have to say it twice? I know, or hate? I imagine. But that's right. It is not finished, finished. It is just finished. And it is mine. Boom. We'll walk 2022. Me made super near tea. Ding. Although it's more of a tank, but that's okay. We're going to go with tea. All right. But this is how she came out. And wait, I'll show you up close. See, I just wove in some of the ends on the front so I can show y'all on camera, but the back still got <laughs> <I'm> dangling. <laughs> dangling. But it like as as bad as it went the first time, it went that well this time. So it fits exactly the way I want it to fit. I have just the right amount of ease. I have just the right length. I wanted it to come to the top of the hip because you know I had to be conscious of how much yarn I had. Um, the gray was my limiting color, mm -hmm. so I couldn't make it too much longer. And then I did intarsia, so I, you know, each row was part gray, and then one of the other colors. And it is fantastic. It is wonderful. It is lovely. It's, it makes me very, very, very happy. And I was telling Lisa, like, anytime I make something that comes out exactly the right size, I'm always surprised because I feel like it's almost always an accident. But this one, like, both the width okay. and the length, everything just came out just so. Can you tell people what you do to figure out the size? That's the thing. I feel like I do the same thing every time, and sometimes it fits and sometimes it don't. But, <laughs> you know, I make my swatch. This one, I only swatch the gray yarn because... Between all the other colors, there's like two rows of single crochet in the gray. So most of these colors are surrounded by the gray yarn on three sides. Mm -hmm. So that the gray yarn really had a lot of control over what my final page would be. So I only swatched the gray yarn and I measured my swatch and I learned from Shannon Mullet Bowlesby. Don't try to like measure out an inch on your swatch and count the stitches. Yeah. Instead, I measure the whole length, the whole height, and then I divide by the number of inches to get the number of stitches per, per inch, inch and the number of rows per inch. And then I, that's the number I used for my math. And even if it comes out, you know, fractional, I still use that number, the, the fractions of a stitch or fractions of a row. And I will round up after I do the math. So if, if I want something that's supposed to be like 20.6 stitches or something, I will round up after I've done all my stitches and then I'll go to 21 or decide if I want to go down to 20 or what have you. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's just, I just measured the swatch and then scaled it. Right. So this up here on the shoulder, this shoulder is Barocco Meraki. And that was from knit one stitch two. And then the one on the bottom that is Barocco Vivo, and that was from Yarn Shop at Alma Park. And then, where did we go? Oh, we went to Slip Stitch Avenue, and that's where I got this pink one. That's um, Juniper Moon Farm Zooey. And then we went to Frame and Fiber, and I got this green yarn, which is Quince & Co. Willet. And then Grace & Pearl, I got Modern Cotton DK. And then Balzac & Company. I got unique cotton from Earth Yarns, and this one is a hand dot cotton and DK weight. So this is really like a souvenir tea because like I, you know, I got each of these yarns at a different shop and I remember picking out each one and I love it. I love how that feels. I'm like, oh, oh my yes, gosh. Absolutely. <laughs> Been there, done that, made the t-shirt. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> so my top is done and it is a success and I'm very, very happy with it. However, 
had a little yarn left over, right? I didn't use any of the gray because I still have to do my edging. So I'm going to do that in the gray yarn. So I was preserving my gray. But all these other colors, I had quite a bit of yarn left over. In fact, most of these, I think I've only used 50 grams, even though I got 100 grams at each store. So I made another thing. Ta -da! Da -da -da! So remember last week I mentioned that I got these awesome bag bottoms. It has like the little feet on it. I don't know if you can see. Yeah. Um, and it's just like a faux leather. And it has these little holes so that you can stitch right through them and make a bag right off of the space. And so that is what I did. I used five of the six yarns to make my souvenir tote so i have a wool walk 2022 me made souvenir tote Hello. to go with my souvenir tea look at that isn't that cool I, so I'm these excited. are not the final handles these are my placeholder handles we just had these in the house i just wanted to see what the bag looked like with handles on it so these are just kind of like tacked on but i will find some new handles i'm going to line the bag and i have this kind of pink fabric in here that is going to be my lining and which is also this is just an old sundress that I had um I'm going to buy some interfacing like a stiff interfacing mm -hmm. to go between the lining and the oops someone let's go yeah um to go between the lining and the outer shell of the bag because I want the bag to be able to stand up on its own right now it does not do that at all because cotton right it's mm -hmm. very soft um so you know, without, without having the bag stuff, the whole thing just collapses. But I'm going to put the interfacing in it so that the bag will stand up. And I'm planning to rock it with my tea. I'm excited. So it took me, I, just, I worked on the bag like over two days. And the first day I worked all the way up to, I think, the green yarn. And when I went to bed... I could not stop thinking about the bag. I was so close to being there. I was tired. I was really, like, really bleary-eyed, tired. Mm -hmm. Couldn't make another stitch. If I had tried, I'd have made a whole entire mess. But I just couldn't stop thinking about it. I was so excited about it. As soon as I got the next day, first thing I did was get back to working on my bag so that mm -hmm. I could just finish up this last little bit. And I found these handles, and I stitched them on. And I, I don't know. I was just, like, crazy excited about it. And... Just as a set, I think they are. I'm so happy. <laughs> I really should be. They're you adorable. Know, I have no idea. I did not know that you were planning to change out that handle because I really like yeah. it. Yeah. I want. I, so this is brown. I just want a handle that's black to go with the bottom of the bag. Oh, okay. So. But I have like a whole. Remember, I bought one yarn at each store. Mm -hmm. So I ended up with six yarns. And that was enough for me to make two things. And I still have little bits left. I could, you know, people are making scrunchies and stuff. I, I can make a few little extra things if I want to. I'm not going to. Okay. But <laughs> I could if I wanted to. But the fact was, so I ended up with about 500. Because the first store only bought a 50 gram ball. So I ended up with 550 grams of yarn. And... I made that work. So my wool walk did not break the bank. I had a lot of fun. And I had two awesome souvenirs out of it. And I'm still a little salty. I didn't win no prizes. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you won that one ball of yarn. Yeah. That, that was cool. Ball. That was nice. I, in fact, I think I would make a bag. Oh, you know what? I make, No, it's my other bag. Um, I'll probably make a bag with that because it was another cotton yarn. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make a bag with that. But I'm really excited about bag making in general just because I feel like now that I have the, the bag the bottoms, yeah. um, it'll be really easy to make them. And it's something that I can do with yarns that I own, but I'm not likely to wear yes. because they're acrylic or maybe they're a wool that I find very scratchy. So I feel like it's just given my stash a new life. And I'm really excited about it. You know what I'm excited about? You'll be able to wear something from last year's wool walk to next year's wool walk. Of course, that is the plan while I'm shopping to buy my supplies for mm -hmm. next year's wool walk tea. So. I love it. 
I absolutely love it. But I, it, it's a real oh, it's called the comeback tea. I just named it. Uh oh, because I had to come back from my initial failure, come up with a new design to make it work. Okay, it's the comeback, the comeback tea. tea. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> so, yay. Go you. All I'm right. so excited. Like my, my cheeks are from smiling. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like it too. That that that's kind of awesome. What do you reckon I? Well, I wanted to show something that I had already made. I love this t-shirt, right? I've had it for years. And it had lace on it that was just shattered. It was polyester lace that just wore out basically. So being a crafty fiber artist that I am, I had gotten this book. It's the Japanese Knitting Stitch Bible, which is one of my favorite stitch dictionaries. Not just because the patterns are beautiful and intricate. Oh, because those little roses. Oh my God. They are. They yeah, are, make something with that. They are stunning. Make something for me yeah. with that. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> they are absolutely stunning patterns. But she also teaches you how to um, increase and decrease in pattern. Mm -hmm. Like there the are, scene book. Yeah. Exactly. There are little projects in here that you can work on in order to, you know, to work all of that out. But on top of everything else, look at this. There's even a section. Round yolks. Oh, she's just showing off now. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's arranged by function. So if I want an all-over panel pattern, there's a section for that. When I was looking for an edging, which is what these are, I just went to the edging section and picked one. And what I did on the sleeves was I knitted the edging. I knitted two sections of it, two panels, and I butted them up back to back. So I had points on the top and points on the bottom. And I made this out of just some basic linen. So it's still washable. And it just dresses up a t-shirt that I love because one of the things I really adore is stripes and lace together. I don't know why. <laughs> That's very specific. I do. I love it. I feel like it makes, I had no idea about this. It looks so fresh and modern. I, I love it. I love stripes and lace together. I'll also the combine the things you don't know about people. I'll also combine a stripe and a floral. Don't play. Don't test me. I will do it. I love it. <laughs> it just makes everything feel fresh. So consider embellishing your summer teas rather than having to make a whole summer tea. Maybe you can embellish your summer teas. I just got some white t-shirts and I was like, you know what? Go by me dice. <laughs> what? A little bit of lace on the sleeves. And I can't tell you how many lace, you know, how many edging patterns are in here. But look at this. Now That's I'm not very one, intricate. Oh my god. I'm not one for huge charts like that, but for something like that, I might make an is exception. Is it like Christmas trees? What is going on there? You could decide that's anything you want. You can be these patterns. I believe one person knows how to do all these stitches. That's like a this lot. is, I believe, her third book. That is impressive. They are oh. on their game in Japan. Okay. Don't play. Oh, you know what? Those would be like a nice bell sleeve. Yes. But this is just section where she's showing you how to increase and decrease in pattern. So she chose some patterns and oh, you, you can work out like the principle. Oh, so cute. Mm -hmm. But I might have some t-shirts to pass you. Oh, wow. <laughs> Let's do some edges for me. Wow, okay. <laughs> you know they're a bazillion gorgeous crochet edges. Yeah, they are. Okay, moving on. <laughs> 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 there are billions mm -hmm. gorgeous crochet edgings but like I said I the stitch patterns in here are so intricate that you could just spend time swatching from this book and have a fabulous time like I can imagine that as a sweater that's very pretty so do check it out I'm going to put a link in uh, in the description bar and in our show notes Actually, you know what I've been doing? I just started it last week because it takes less time. I've been putting my show notes on the website and just putting a link 
in the description bar to the show notes. So just click that link and all the show notes are there. <laughs> I'm just telling the truth. I'm telling it. So I have been working on my Zana top. Very excited about it. This morning, I just put on the edging on one side. So this is almost complete. I'm, well, let me drift this yeah. way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is almost complete. And I am absolutely loving it. I had, I really didn't have any problems with it. It's, it's actually a very easy knit. But one of one thing I had to do was block the daylights out of it because this fabric just crumples and curls up on itself. So yesterday I pinned it out and the pinning took a minute and then I steamed it and let it dry, you know, on the pins. And that was how I was able to pick up the stitches easily because it was just so curled up i wouldn't have been able to do it and crystal got totally distracted this is truly impressive she's going I can't through believe what i'm seeing in this book she's it's going through like, the book holy cow i didn't know knitters did popcorns yeah i find that fascinating they're a pain in the butt to do but they yeah sound, they seem like such a crochet thing uh -uh. everybody does popcorns but there she blows and i pulled out of my stash of closures like these guys I don't know how long I've had them. It's been a minute. So I'm going to either do the one with one little diamond or the one with two little diamonds. Mom voted for the one with two because I just want to have a little closure on the front so I can choose to wear it closed sometimes. Yeah, because the original pattern doesn't have anything. Yeah. And also a little spongy because the only picture of this thing completed is the one in the magazine and it's only a picture from the front. So I have no idea <laughs> what the back looks like. And I had a question about the back, but the back of mine looks fine. <laughs> and I just had to say, well, oh, well, I guess that's gonna be okay. But I'm very, very, very excited with uh, the Noro magazine. And how often do they publish? I don't know. I mean, absolutely no idea. That would be good information for them to tell you in the front of the book. <laughs> I'm going to presume that it's at least twice a year. <laughs> I'm not, that's what I'm going to assume. I'm going to assume that it's twice a year. I don't know. But this one was a winner. So I got kind of excited about another pattern in this particular book. This one is called Nymphilia. It's just a cute t-shirt style. And I like the all over lace pattern. So I'm going to swatch it and see if I like knitting this lace because it is all over. And, you know, I can't like avoid it if I don't want to knit it. So I'm going to, I'm going to swatch it and but what you can do is just do the lace up here mm -hmm. like across the top oh yeah and then do a, a simpler stitch pattern yeah. the, going down that'll do but we shall see so i think i'm going to do it in cumulus because it'll it's be... a uh worsted weight or yeah. are you just scaling up no it's a worsted weight in the book and the noro yarn they chose for it is Superman, and I don't think for me it would be a summer top. It would probably be too, a little too heavy mm -hmm. because I believe there's some wool content in that. I like cumulus a lot. I have but, some cumulus I'm going to probably make some shorts with. But this feels so deliciously soft, and I believe that it will be cool enough when it's hot, mm -hmm. and as an indoor air conditioning tee, I won't be freezing once I come back inside. So I love this soft gray. It'll go with a lot of things I have. So I think I'm going to end up making a Nymphilia top. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be the very next one. 
because I I envisioned this as a twin set. Mm-hmm. And I want to do... You mean you're not going to make a matching bag? I'm not going to make a matching bag. Mm-hmm. I'm going to make a matching camisole. Okay. Because I have leftover balls from this. So I think it'll make a really cute summer twin set. I have some chai. I have not used it yet, but I really want to. It's that a feel. I think I like, you I love like wearing linen it. and silk. But you have me a hello. <laughs> <laughs> That's my germ. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Now, I don't know what it will be like crocheted because this is a stockinette stitch top Mm -hmm. and it really just pulled in on itself and remember guys i don't know if i mentioned i probably did mention it but in my now i had measured my swatch and i measure my swatch the same way crystal does uh um i measure the whole swatch side to side top to bottom and i don't do any like edging stitches to make a pretty swatch because i want to have a true gauge um i measured it I calculated it out, I picked my size, and the thing looked so drawn up on itself. It looked really small the whole time. I was like, <laughs> I kept like stretching it out and measuring it. I'm like, no, your numbers are correct. Do not make this thing any bigger. And I'm so glad I didn't because when I measured myself to get to figure out what size to pick, I chose a size that was more related to my high bust than to my full bust mm-hmm. because I wanted it to fit nicely in the shoulders. Mm-hmm. And my high bust is, I think, three, three and a half to four inches smaller than my full bust. So I think if I had made the size for my full bust, it would have just been big mm-hmm. and droopy and hanging off me. So I tried it on this morning and I'm really kind of liking the fit. So consider doing that when you guys are picking a size. If you find that, you know, things always feel a little too big once you put it on, try choosing the size that's more directly related to your high bus plus your ease, however much ease you want to have. Because I didn't want this to be too oversized, so I wanted to have about an inch or two of ease maybe, and that's exactly what I got. So now it's not like just flopping off of me. Mm-hmm. So I think the um, camisole I'm going to do under here, you know, I wanted to ask you, how did you decide how wide to make your straps on your t-shirt? Oh, I just picked the number. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you had a system. <laughs> now, because I was just like, do I want a skinny one or do I want a medium or wide? This was medium for me. So things like an inch and a half. Okay. Because I just want to make the strap wide enough to cover my bra strap. Yeah. All right, so I'll 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 try that. Make it an inch and a half. No matter. <laughs> okay, I there is a, no system. I thought you had a system. Oh my gosh. Okay, that, that's fine. That, it is the wild work. west. <laughs> but I like this. I love how this feels. I this is my first time working with a linen and silk blend, and it actually kind of feels almost a little cool to the touch. It's so kind of weird. So. That, that's where I'm at. Um, I think my next cast on will be the under piece that goes onto this. So and do you then, have a pattern or are you just going to wing it? Uh, I have a pattern in mind Jesse made. Mm-hmm. Line, what's it called? Something. She has a couple of those um, camisole patterns. I'm picking one of those. Um, I And you see I haven't like settled in my mind which one it's going to be. Mm-hmm. So... It'll work out. What I'm going to do, though, is see how much yarn I have Mm -hmm. and pick the one that I have enough yarn for. (laughs) Because this took so far, I'm working on the fifth ball of the yarn. I did not run out of my gray. I was very excited. Yeah. I thought for sure I was doomed. But no, it wasn't even close. (laughs) When she was coming, like, onto the home stretch with the strap, she was like... Well, I've already decided. If I run out of that gray yarn, I'm just going to add another gray yarn to it. That was the plan. <laughs> that, that, she was very sanguine at that point. She was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know that's how you roll. <laughs> but I'm, I'm really looking forward. I'm looking forward to wearing this. Like, I told you, I told you how exciting it is when you wear a thing that you need. It's just like, ah, you get like this weird little high from it. I love it. Yeah, it is a weird little high. And 
don't don't talk to me about my sparkle. And don't let like a random stranger eyes. come up to you on the street and be like, oh, that's such a cute top you're wearing. Like, oh, thanks, I made it. And I <laughs> feign humility, but I remember be like, I made it, I made it, I it's made it, like, made it, made it <laughs> in your first. No. <laughs> Yeah, but I it, yeah, it's fun. But I think this is gonna look great on here. See the little sparkle. If you have the choice, always choose the sparkle. <laughs> what else is going on with you? Nothing much. I think um, I will just go back to my dress that I was making. Am I mm -hmm. still connected to yarn here? Yes. So, oh, I forgot about silk dress. Yeah, this is silk dress. Right now, I'm just doing the. I'm about to start my neckline shaping in the front. And this is Ella Ray Rustic Silk, which is a beautiful yarn that never got its proppers. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to give her her flowers. But I, I love it. And I'm using like a total of six different colors. The, this neutral up here is number six, but the stripes are five colors. And I mean, I, it's a gorgeous yarn. It's an absolutely gorgeous yarn. Let me ask so. you, how do you like the silk as compared to the different cottons you used? I like them all. I look. I like natural fibers, and I like not a lot of the non-wool yarns. I know some people are really like invested in wool, um, but for some reason, I'm just always drawn to cottons and silks and linens. And this, for me, was probably I said it was like a cotton study. <laughs> like mm -hmm. I got to use all these different kinds of cottons and cotton blends, and. This is the first time I've really used this much cotton that was not craft store cotton. Yeah. And it's a whole new world. It is. And I like it. This Barocco Modern Cotton DK, which comes in a bunch of colors, is a beautiful yarn that was an absolute joy to work with. It's got a really nice tight twist, which I also really like, but it's still just really soft. It gives you some drape. It's not what you think of when you think of cotton yarn. It is not heavy. So I, I don't feel like have to choose. I give me silk, give me cotton, give me linen, give me all. <laughs> but and that's the thing with these: none of them were heavy. No, they all had different hands. This is this is really comfortable, and I'm so looking forward to wearing it. But yeah, no, I, I'm gonna love my silk dress too. Like, girl, what you I think about? I like these colors for you. I do. Yeah. Oh, I love it. You know what I bought this yarn for? I was going. So you know the. The fade shawl uh -huh. by Andrew Mowry. Someone did it was by Andrew Mowry. Yeah, yeah. Someone did a crochet fade. And I actually picked these yarns to do the crochet fade. And when I started it, I don't know, I just wasn't crazy about it. I, it was when I was already starting to become disenchanted with patterns. Yeah. And I just wasn't happy about how it looked. And it was one of those patterns that called for using a much larger hook size than I thought was called for for the yarn. And I never like working like that. So I just set it aside and I've had this yarn sitting for like years now, but I love it so much. I was like, I have to use it. And oh, I think this is a much better use. Oh, yeah. So and I think, I think the, the way you did the striping sequence was really cool. It's kind of randomized, but it still feels, it has a rhythm to it. And yeah, I discovered a trick. I actually saw something in a stitch dictionary that was like, ah, oh, I see what you all did there. What did they do? So basically they had like, I think it was three colors of yarn, but the pattern repeat was like maybe four or five rows. Mm -hmm. So they always just use those three yarns in the same sequence. Like I think it was black, white, gray, black, white, gray. Right. So sometimes the black would be a row one. Sometimes the black would be a row three. Sometimes the black could be a row four. So you would have different colors doing different things, but always in the same order. order. Oh. So what I did was... I chose um, stripes of different widths. Mm -hmm. So I think some of them are, I'll just make up numbers because I don't remember right now. But I think I did 12 rows, eight rows, and four rows of stripes. And then I had my five colors. So I always use those five colors in numerical order. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, like here you have 12 rows, that's this light pink color. But then up here you have 12 rows, that's the yellow color. So there's an order to it yeah so i didn't have to think i didn't have to follow a chart but it gives the appearance of being randomized and so what i did with the skeins of yarn they have little stitch markers on them with i don't think you can see it 
letters of the alphabet. I swear there's a little D on there. But <laughs> basically, they're labeled A, B, C, D, and E. And so I just always use them in that order. Okay. Regardless of what but size stripe I was That's doing. why there's no chaos. It right. feels rhythmic. Yeah. Because there is a rhythm. Because I was stressing over how I was going to do my striping pattern. And then I happened to see that stitch pattern in the dictionary. And I was like, ah, oh, that's brilliant. So... What's the dictionary did you use? It was my Japanese dictionary. Oh, you have a Japanese crochet dictionary? I, d I do. I did not, know. not just you. Uh oh. Okay. I have to see if there are any more because I really like that one. Yeah, it's I one of my most used of dictionaries. Um, but it was funny, like to get an idea. I was looking for a stitch pattern and I ended up just doing single crochet, but I still got an idea from a stitch dictionary. So it turns out they're good for a lot of things. <laughs> Even if you're not following the stitch pattern exactly, precisely. Yeah. But you're lucky because this book was like translated into English. Yeah. Mine, not so much. <laughs> There's like no words in it that are in English other than the title. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so it's all charts. So I always refer to the book as a master class in chart reading because if you can get through some of the stitch patterns in this book just from the charts, you're going to be fine reading charts. Oh, let me tell you about this book too. All of the stitch patterns are charted. Okay. So do a few of them. <laughs> um, you will get used to the charts. Also, the, um, the key is in the front of the book. That's why I have it kind of tabbed out because the keys are in the front of the book. My chart was in the back of the book. Okay, this the A is in a different. Can you see the A? I don't know. Yeah, oh, there you go. The yeah, there you so go. they're all labeled A, B, C, D, and E. So I always know to use them in order, just in case. I've been carrying them around on a tray instead of putting them in a bag because I was like, how am I going to keep them in order if I put mm -hmm. them in a bag? But the stitch markers worked out just fine. That is amazing. So yeah, so I think this is what I'm going to go back to. I have to make the back. I'm going to have to do my neck shaping mm -hmm. and then make the back. So what shape neck did you go with? So it's going to be just a slightly shaped boat neck. I just don't like my neckline very high. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to carve out a little bit here, but it's still mostly meant to go straight across. So if you're going to shape a neck, what are you doing in order to do that? Um, I am... Are you doing I, so I basically, or? yeah. So basically, I start my shoulder strap a little bit wider, mm -hmm. and then I decrease on the inside of the strap so that the strap narrows and the neck widens a little bit. Okay. Cool. You're kind of, you know, inspiring me to move off pattern a little bit. I will play I with pattern. Definitely doesn't have to be either or. I don't want to. I don't always necessarily want to start with like nothing but the idea. I have some sketches in my notebook. Because when you try to adapt that vest pattern, you got I know, lost. I did. The thing is, the thing to know so before, many things. you know, people say, oh, I wish I knew this before I started. The thing to know about designing your own garments is there are so many choices to make. Every single thing you have to decide. So if you're making a top. You have to decide what weight yarn you're using, what colors you're using, what stitch pattern you're using. Mm -hmm. The length of the top is going to be cropped. Is it going to be waist length? Is it going to be hip length? Is it going to be a cardigan? Is it going to be a pullover? Is it going to have a hood? What length of your sleeve? Seven, eight, three quarters, short sleeve, tank top. You have to make every single tiny choice on your own. So if that's something that's going to stymie you, be prepared for it. Start simple. Mm -hmm. Start with very simple shapes and very simple designs and build from there, which is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to like, you know, get a little bit more elaborate with my designs now. Uh, not elaborate, but more than just doing rectangles, which was my thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, you got to start somewhere. You can get bogged down in the decision making. You really yeah, can. Yeah, I think I did. But I have an idea, but it's like really a fall thing. It's not going to be something I work on now it's just because... Start. <laughs> because <laughs> it's going to be heavy and I really want to complete a couple of summer garments I'm like, really I've looking forward to it I've been planning a duster for a while and I think I just figured out what my design is going to be because I wanted to do I wanted to do like a checkerboard pattern but I didn't mm -hmm. want to just do a straight checkerboard and I think I figured out how I'm going to make it work but 
that thing's just been, the yarn's been sitting there just because I couldn't make the decisions yet. I didn't yeah. know what exactly I wanted to do. And now I have some idea. So you can get bogged down in that. You can. Yeah. I mean, now that I'm more confident in, you know, just making sure, I was always worried that I would bait things the wrong size, you know? And sometimes I you had, will. Yeah. I, I, you know, <laughs> like, you don't know, let I that be my, the thing you're afraid of. It's going to happen. I had my ugly hat phase. Yes. And I made ugly and hats for such it. a long time. <laughs> and now you make me the cute hat. A very long time. That Willie Wormhead hat you did last year was so cute. I know. I love that. <laughs> love that hat. But I think that now I'm kind of ready to start to branch out. I don't always want to design every single thing I make just because sometimes it's nice just to start out like, Oh, this is already figured out. I'm not, I'm not mad at that. And I will pay for that privilege. Oh, it's already figured out. Cause I'm going to have to make my own adjustments anyway. Mm -hmm. Like there's a change I would have made on this thing. Mm -hmm. And if I can't make it work the way it should, I'm going to rip it out and make that change. But I totally get why you would design your own things because it's really interesting and you do learn a lot. But for me, using a pattern is a shortcut. Well, for me, I think designing started with two things. One is just I wanted to test what I had learned. Mm -hmm. I'd been making things from patterns and I wanted to see, well, did, did this have any impact? Have I taken any of it in so that now I can make my own things? But I found that it also helps me to make better use of my yarn because rather than trying to match up my existing yarn that I bought, you know, maybe two years before I saw this pattern, mm -hmm. trying to make the yarn match the pattern, I can pick any yarn I want. So this, my silk yarn was sitting around because it didn't work for the pattern that I was going to do with it. And now I'm like, okay, I can turn this into a dress. So I can just pluck things from my stash now and make them useful instead of having them sitting around. It, I feel like it just gave me a lot more flexibility. And that was what I learned after I started designing my own things. Cause now like I, I shop my stash. It used to be, you know, you looked at the pattern and it's like, oh, if I don't have a yarn, I have to go buy something. Yeah. I can shop my stash more. Well, for me, I took a slightly different route with regard to that because I do get that as an issue. Um, I started learning how to adjust the patterns to what I needed uh, for the yarn that I have. Like this yarn is not the same as the yarn that this pattern called for. Um, Asaginu, they say it is an Aran weight linen and paper yarn, which I didn't understand. But I was like, okay. That's that's saying I've something. I've seen a number of Japanese brands with paper yarns. I guess that's like a thing. Yeah, I uh, I don't know, <laughs> but um, so I did not get exactly the gauge that they got with that yarn. I don't know that I could. You know, I don't know that I could. Mm -hmm. But once you understand how to measure your own swatch, and this was such a simple shape, it wasn't like it was anything right. crazy to to calculate out. I was able to just use the gauge that I got and figure out which size to choose to make it work in terms of my sizing. So that's another route you can go to. You go with two. Now, I my row gauge is nothing near what the pattern called for. So when I had to pick up the stitches, I could not pick up the number of stitches they wanted me to because I just didn't have, mm -hmm. you know, same number of rows. Yeah, I didn't have the same number of rows. So once you get comfortable with that idea, you just pick up as many stitches as you need to. Is it looking bunched? Because I I didn't like altering my patterns at all. I know. I mean, I even was like stickler. to change out a stitch pattern, she'd be like, no. <laughs> I was like, but what? Uh? And I feel like patterns are like recipes. You don't have to follow Recipe, recipes exactly. No, because recipe, and I think that's a bad analogy because recipes have numbers. So you put a cup of this and a teaspoon of that. I feel like recipes and patterns are pretty much the same thing. No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> See, I, you, y'all don't know what she do when she's cooking. And she says she's, she'll tell you she followed a recipe, but then she'll say, well, I didn't have these five ingredients. So here's my version. I'm like, okay. But that's the same <laughs> thing I do with patterns. <laughs> If I don't use, like, I, I knew once I saw what that yarn was, I knew I didn't really want 
to make this you need out of some that. flexibility. Whether yeah. you're designing on your own or you are following a pattern, you need some flexibility. You need to know how to make things work for you. And I feel like some people, like people who, who have larger butts, tend to learn this very fast. Yeah. When it comes to knitting and crochet, they are always doing alterations to make garments fit them. Yes. So I think people have been learning it as they need to, but it's really something I think that benefits everyone. Yeah. To just not be afraid like I was to, to change things as needed. Yeah, especially like the, the little things. Like I was once talking to a customer in the shop who was telling me she absolutely hated the rib she was doing on her sweater. She didn't like knitting it. It was inconvenient for her to knit. She didn't like it. I was like, well, it's just the ripping. Just change the ripping out. And she said to me, oh, no, I, I never change anything on a pattern. Mm -hmm. So I would start with little things like that. If I don't like the stitch pattern, I will pick a stitch pattern that has the same stitch count. Then none of the numbers change. It just looks different. And those are simple, easy ways to start making changes. Then I would change length. You know, I don't always like sweaters that go like really the last couple of things I made have been cropped and I really like the crop silhouette on me. So I'm cropping everything. I'm like, chop it, chop it. Lengths are easy to change. So I would start off with the stuff that's easy to do and then move up in difficulty, <laughs> you know, just at, to try it out so that you can see like, I'm going ahead and using this yarn because it's the same weight. Mm -hmm. But I'm not, all worsted weight yarns are not created equal. So I won't know until I work a swatch how much, how different this is. This is a different composition. I'm using almost 100% cotton. I think this is like a 94% cotton, 6% nylon. Mm -hmm. So my fabric is going to behave a little bit differently. And I'm cool with that. <laughs> I'm totally cool with that. Because the, the yarn they use is just not, not appropriate for my climate. So I think that's another thing that knitters don't always take into account. And when they finish the thing, they're kind of unhappy with it. Just because it really wasn't appropriate for your climate. I always complain about... Those yes, chicks in the magazine walking on the beach in that sweater. sweater. Yeah, in Canada. In Can <laughs> yeah, in Canada, maybe. <laughs> I would die on the beach here. So, you know, I have to change things up just to make it make sense mm -hmm. for me. And, you know, people are always talking about their difficulty doing yarn substitutions. Mm -hmm. And if you are not buying pattern yarn, if you are substituting, you are going to have to change things. Yeah. If you get lucky and you get the exact same gauge, good on you. But well, <laughs> you know what though? <laughs> You're going to have to make some changes. You can work the opposite way too. I could actually go into Ravelry, take the gauge off this ball band and look for patterns that knit to this gauge. I mean, that is a shortcut you can use. Let's say you have yarn and you want to match it to something in your stash already, or better yet, make the swatch and then look for patterns in your gauge that you got. And that would pretty much work too. I mean, but. there's really just any number of reasons why at some point you're going to have to do some math. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> it's really inescapable. And but don't be afraid of that. Yeah, I'm a math folk, so... If I can do it, you can Is do it too. Oh I am. God. I'm a math folk. I had some bad experiences. <laughs> I had some bad experiences. Let's just put it like that. So she can do it. Yeah. If I can do it, <laughs> you, probably can. you can totally do it. But you gotta like be more willing to just kind of like take charge of your own knitting or crochet. Yeah. For, you know, any number of reasons, whether it's to save money, if it's to get a better fit, if it's just to have more options, you know, at some point, you, you like I, I was saying before, you have to meet the designer halfway. <laughs> you have to bring some of your own skills and knowledge to the table so that you get the best possible result. Right. From all that work you're going to put into what you're doing. Because I, you know, 
made this thing twice. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it. you just have to be willing to figure out the things that aren't working and make it work this time. Mm -hmm. oh, Tim Gunn is so right. He is. He's absolutely <laughs> He is absolutely right. But I think the sticking point, too, for a lot of people is that they don't measure themselves. I can That's hear you say that. That's point. one of those things I just have trouble believing because, like, how do you buy clothes if, if you don't measure yourself? I, I told you I've had several people pick their size by their dress size from commercial clothes. And even, even if within one book or one magazine, the sizes are not standard. I have to look at each pattern to see what they mean by small, medium, large, extra large, 2X, 1X, whatever. I don't know what those designation means until I see the measurements. When I started out design, once I realized like I was really gonna like get into like designing my own thing, I had two different books, one by Shannon Millett Bowlesby and one by Dora Ornstein that told you which measurements to take for sweaters. Mm -hmm. And some of the measurements were the same. Some of them were a little different from book to book. And I had my mom do all the measurements for me in both the books. And I have them written down and I have them in an envelope inside my design journal that I stuck to the front cover so that I always have those numbers. And that's where I start when I'm making anything. I'm not even sure how else you would do that. Uh, I told you, I had an issue. I had an experience, and it was a miracle that the person made something that was wearable because the number they picked was a cast-on number, and they thought that was a size. Yeah, I think. I mean, you don't have to share the measurements with anyone if you don't want to. Mm -hmm. But you got to have those numbers straight for yourself. Right. Because and, yeah. I find it, I still find it very challenging picking a size from a pattern. Mm -hmm. and regardless of making things myself, I have a hard time picking a size from a pattern. And sometimes that bust measurement is really all you have to go on. Yeah. And that will give you like at least a range. So, yeah. You got to start with your measurements have somebody help you with it if you can because that'll just make it a little bit more accurate um you can also measure something that you already like the fit of mm -hmm. and use that as your guide because i think what trips people up is also ease yeah so basically the difference between your actual body and the, your favorite shirt that's your ease yeah and if you have a couple of things that you you know your go-to that you always grab because you just like how they fit you, measure those. And the one that fits the closest, that's gonna be your smallest ease number. <laughs> then your middle size and then the largest, whatever your oversized size is, because I'll tell you the truth. I love, I watch a lot of Korean dramas and Chinese shows. and I watch a lot of Asian television. And I love the oversized way they wear things. But that's not the oversized way I wear things. I wear some things oversized, but never with 12 inches of ease the way they I do. I know I hear about some patterns that have that much ease. Yeah. That's a foot it away from like your body. Lot. You know, so once you figure out what oversized is for you, then when you see a pattern that has 12, 14 inches of ease, you might say, no, that's that's too yeah, oversized for me. Six, and that's yeah. oversized for me. Yeah, and like that's, that's for me. When I'm trying to, I'm starting to like get a sense of that now with lengths of tops. Mm -hmm. What's cropped for me? What's exactly waist length? What's hip? What's high hip and what's mid hip? So that when I'm deciding what length I want my top to be, I can all just associate that with a number immediately and say, mm -hmm. okay, so now I know this how many inches long I need my top to be. Right. And it's important to know your length so that when you see the length in the in the schematic or in the pattern, you can say, oh, I know from my armpit to where I like my clothes to sit at my waist or below my waist or wherever that point is, is 18 inches. And if the thing is 30 inches long, you know, it's too long. You know, you don't you don't necessarily want it that long. 
So once those numbers become real for you, you can make better decisions about and it'll help you with every single pattern you make. Yes. <laughs> yes. It absolutely you only have will. to get those numbers, write them down once, and then you will be able to use them for every single thing you make. Yes. Yes. And then you also won't have to wait until the thing is finished and then get surprised by what <laughs> size it is. <laughs> Your spirit crushed. Wow. <laughs> I've been there, done that. Okay. Your spirit just crushed. You pull your shorts up and they stop at your knees. Oh. Or you look through, you try to pull your cowl over your head and you find yourself looking through a little hole like this. <laughs> like, oh, that happened. <laughs> That's <Ow>. unfortunate. <laughs> like, ow. So, also the other thing I do all the way through the whatever I'm making, I measure it constantly. Because I have that voice in my head saying, girl, oh, that look a little small. <laughs> you know, your voice might say, that look a little big. What's going on? So lay it out, measure it so that you know where you are in your process. And as soon as there's something that can get onto your body, start trying it on. Which is complicated with knitting because you'll have to sometimes transfer it to another thing. Yeah. To the stitches and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, I'm working with with open stitches. <laughs> Don't let that freak you out. I just put my stitch marker on and I can try it on. And that's yeah. It. yeah. That's not always the case for me. But mm. you can put in some lifelines. My mom keeps telling me she wants me to learn Tunisian. And if I do think you get really beautiful fabrics. Tunisian is very versatile. But... I can't do the open stitches. Let me tell you, it gives her the willies. Math gives me the willies. It's open so stitches stressful. freaks her out. Because she's literally stressed. It's mm -mm. bizarre. It's not bizarre. She goes, what do you do if you drop a stitch? I'm like, I pick it up. <laughs> when she drops the stitch, they'll be knitting and be like, oh, I dropped the stitch. And I'm like, <gasps> yeah. <laughs> she actually does that. And I'm like, you're tripping me out with that. I pick it up. And like seeing her, like if she finds that she dropped a stitch afterwards, and so she does that thing with the crochet hook where you somehow you dig down and you pick it back up. I feel it's like watching someone do a maze. <laughs> I'm just like that way you feel lost as if you were in the maze no, yourself. No, it's not that serious. I don't knitting. No, I don't. I all. I really wonder how I would have responded to knitting if I didn't crochet. Um. And I have no idea, <laughs> but I get everything that she tried to show me in knitting. I compared it to crochet and I was just like, oh, that's not how you do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And I consider myself a very basic crocheter and I'm always just like, you put this thing, right? This bag, bag bottom and just went ahead and made a bag. And I was like, ah, uh, uh, all right. All I did was single crochet stitches. There was like no skill or technique to it. Yeah. Yeah. I see. I see. I see. But like I said, there are some things you, you need to just like go with so that your stuff just comes out the way you want it to. And as long as your vision gets made, you did it right. You know, even if your technique's a little off, because my techniques have been a little off sometimes. Uh, but you get that wearable thing that you wanted. It looks the way you want it to look. It feels the way you want it to feel. That is success to me. You know, whether it was the official recipe or not. <laughs> Sometimes official was good though. I learned yeah. a lot. The thing was, I learned a lot from working with patterns. Yeah. Things that I would either never figure out on my own or it was just taking me a really, really long time. Working now, designing my own things would have been so much more miserable Yeah, <laughs> if I hadn't made as many things as I did from patterns. So there's definitely a place for, for, for patterns. They, they were my school. They were my instructor because mm -hmm. I knew the basic stitches, but I didn't know how to construct garments. Yeah. Um, so it was very necessary and I needed that and there's I have no shade towards patterns. No, none at all. But I also really love having the flexibility to make things according to my own vision too and to be able to use my yarns and 
a more efficient way. So you want options. You you absolutely. want absolutely absolutely. And I feel that you can get a lot of practice using patterns. You can figure out what you like. Um, but then for me, I had to go a little bit beyond because there's a lot of knitting patterns out there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all patterns are not created equal. Mm -hmm. So it was harder for me to learn just based on patterns, just because some patterns, they don't tell you what things are called. They don't well, describe. I was easily. lucky in that regard because yeah. I struck on some good designers. Shannon with Bowlesby and Dora Orenstein and Melissa Leapman mm -hmm. know their stuff. Yes. So working from their patterns specifically, um, Lisa Gentry was also another one who like, you got to find the right. If you, and that's the thing. You find well-written patterns, stick with that designer for a little while. Yeah. And it'll help. You learn a lot. That's what got me. Um, buying books because there would be very little, let's say, explanation sometimes. Yeah, I always um, lean more towards books than download yeah. patterns as well. And then by the time I got started buying technique books, it was because I realized, oh, you don't know how to do any of this stuff. Uh, so I would get this pattern. I would get these pattern books because, you know, the pretty pictures, they just seduce yeah. you. And I'd be like, oh, oh, Estonian lace. Not just Estonian lace, okay? <laughs> Estonian lace is just the one at the top of mine. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, there's been a couple of things. There's been a couple of things that I was like, oh, I don't know how to do that. And once I discovered, I understood, you know, they say you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. Once I figured out what I didn't know, that's what led me to getting technique books and veering away a little bit from getting just pretty pattern books because mm -hmm. I was there for the pretty pattern books, okay? Couldn't knit a lick. <laughs> Couldn't purl through the back loop. <laughs> but yeah, so go forth and knit and crochet I joyfully. Say, I was like, well, I thought you would say that part. I was about to. I was about to. I was like, I was like and crochet. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but without the stain. Uh -oh. There's no need for the stain. Uh -oh. I have mad respect for both knitting and crochet. <laughs> oh, that's the last thing I want to tell you guys. I totally forgot. Check out the 3%, okay? Oh, my God. Yes. She is strung out on this Brazilian TV just, show on Netflix. I just finished it. Oh, fine. I just finished it. Just, uh, I mean, talk about watching four or five episodes in a row. Like, at least. Sweetie, you, you okay? You want to come up for air? Nope. <laughs> but not only is it a good story, because it really was a good story, but... There are so many fiber-friendly garments in it. So much crochet, macrame used in garments, uh, embroidery on top of crochet and knitting. It was really fun I just to watch. I saw things that piqued my, my interest. I'm not going to lie. It was really fun to that watch. That top Michelle to was wearing when she escaped from yes. the, the whatever. A little bit of weaving. Yeah, when she escaped from the offshore. But yes, so if you really want to see some fiber friendly TV, check out the three percent. Anyway, that's it for me this week. You good? Mm -hmm. All right, then. Thank you. See you next time. Please like and subscribe. It really gets mom very excited, and she will come and say, Look, you got some new subscribers. <laughs> so, thank you guys. Bye bye.